Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Star Citizen now for 3.24 is broken at time of recording. It's literally not up on the PTU. It's likely to return later today, but I want to talk about that, the latest updates to 3.24, and a quick public service announcement on the ship showdown, as there's a little bit of extra information here that's going to be useful, and we have a ship sale going on, and free fly going on now, all that sort of jazz. So, closed until Friday, Alpha 3.24 PTU. I was really enjoying the previous build that CIG put out for 3.24, I thought it was really good. It was relatively stable. It was very stable, in fact. I, I didn't have any problems with stability, personally. And I was able to do a load of the missions and have a great time. They then put out another patch, fixing and addressing a load of errors. But this also caused a huge amount of instability and effectively broke the game. So they've actually, rather than revert it, they've taken the whole PTU down temporarily, at least at time of recording. There should be a new fixed build up later Friday, um, but more specifically, CIG said, this build has been taken down due to instability. Investigations are ongoing, but likely no new build until Friday. We're on Friday now. No new build turned up um, yet. So what was actually in the build? Well, actually quite a bit of stuff. So uh, tractor beam use adjustments were done. So the tractor beam use on the multi-tool has had its cargo mass balanced to restrict use to cargo sizes under 32 SCU. So the multi-tool can no longer move 32 SCU or larger crates. And they also reduced the usable distance of that multi-tool tractor beam. Both handheld tractor beams have had their movement speeds reduced as well. We know that CIG wanted to tweak the way people are loading and unloading cargo and these tractor beams for a while. And I'm not sure if I like it. I mean, it makes sense that they want large tractor beams, ship tractor beams to be the ones that move um, 32 SCU cargo crates and the sort of dedicated tractor beam. But uh, it's just more fiddly, right? There are item bank UI changes as well. Based on feedback, we determined the storage access flow was not providing the results we wanted. We've thus changed it to open a filtered view of the warehouse inventory to only show FPS gear like the storage access kiosk did. Search is missing in that view and will be added in a future patch. Fortunately, the storage access screen shares a lot of functionality with the freight elevator kiosk, so it wasn't throwaway work. So yeah, they're addressing the item bank stuff. We'll be getting more functionality to that in the future. Seeing that we only actually really want to manage FPS gear from there for the most part, I think it's fine for them just to go, yes, look, it's it's FPS gear that you see here. It doesn't show you all of your inventory that you have at the zone. Cargo hauling mission changes. So they've greatly increased cargo hauling mission rewards. We knew that they were going to do a big pass for all of this stuff, so I'm glad that we're getting more rewards. They now allow players to retrieve cargo for shared missions where they aren't the original mission owner as well, but they've also set hauling intro missions to not be shareable. Now, I haven't been able to experience those new mission rewards. We do know that they've tweaked their effort versus reward calculations. There's an interesting thing here. I would prefer them to sort of reduce inflation in the economy as much as possible and draw everything back, reduce the prices of everything, make the value of a, a single alpha USC significantly higher, magnitudes higher, effectively reduce the actual rewards for things, but try and make alpha USC effectively more valuable individually. Uh, and yeah, I want to get good rewards for doing a good amount of effort, but I don't want there to be just mass inflation in game and alpha USC it, it to be millions and millions and millions for uh, even a small ship or tens or hundreds of thousands of FUEC for a little bit of FPS equipment. That's just me. I'm interested to know what other people's thoughts on the economy are, and obviously they can um, reduce it by magnitude in the future if they wanted to, that sort of stuff. Some ships and vehicles stuff. They removed sign distance fields and shields from spindles and the attached cargo of the hull. So interesting to know actually how that affects the game at all. I, I, I need to see that. To, I need to understand that. I do not fully understand that. The patch also made further ship debris, collision physics performance improvements, and an entity camp performance polish pass for Hurston was done. It fixed a load of issues as well, that patch, with uh, completing mission objectives, the hull sea cargo transfer, uh, uh, hangar transition and physics braking, ship spawning and retrieval, ASOP terminal issues, selling ore and gems at Klesher Prison, uh, mission cargo detection after a uh, sort of server recovery that, that was broken. Um, apparently that was solved in that patch, so um, you didn't 
sort of it didn't lose the fact that something was a mission item. Uh, some other minor mission issues were solved. Um, the medical rescue beacons worked without you being able to sort of exploit it and jab a med pen into a corpse to get your reward and that sort of stuff. It also fixed 11 crashes. It's also likely that one of those fixes or changes is the reason that we've had that sort of instability and those unforeseen issues. This is a case of one step forward, two steps back, very much so, but um, it should be a multiple steps forward situation once they re-release the, the PTU, hopefully later today, because they hopefully will have tracked down that problem, and then obviously all those other fixes are there, and potentially a load more. I'm interested to know what you think. Did you actually get to play in that patch? I did not play in that patch. It went down before I had the opportunity to play it. I'm interested to know what people's thoughts on that and just how unstable it was. Um, tell us in the comments below. The ship showdown! That's running until the 30th of August when we'll find out who the sort of most popular ship in the verse currently is. However, there's a free fly that's running until the 22nd of August. You can try Star Citizen for free. There's 16 ships to try. Anyone um, can also try all those 16 ships as well. It's not just for new players, it's for, for all players. You do need to click on the fly for free button on the free fly page though to get access to those ships again i will link that down below now some other bits and bobs all 16 of those ships are on sale with some caveats for example the f8c i can confirm it is purchasable but you have to have previously found a golden ticket if you haven't then you can't purchase it at the moment i don't believe the cig are planning to um allow everyone to purchase it without a golden ticket Stay tuned, because if, if they do change their mind on that, I'll uh, I'll put a post up about it or a video up about it. Uh, the 890 Jump, a very expensive, sort of uh, most frigate-sized luxury vessel, is on sale every 8 hours until 8am UTC on the 18th of August. So if you want to try and get it, there's a load of waves of it going on sale. They do this with sort of limited hull ships. A couple of other bits and bobs. Keep in mind that the final four competitors, so the top four ships in this competition, will receive a special in-game paint and poster, and the winner will also be honoured with an in-game championship pennant commemorating their 2954 win. So, um, if you own those ships when uh, the Interactive Aerospace Expo is going on later in November, you'll get that stuff for free for the uh, appropriate ship that you own anyway. Um, the ships fighting it out change each day at 4 p.m. UTC. Winner is announced on the 30th of August. Really interested to see who sort of rises to the top. I would probably expect it to be the run and gun uh, category winner, whether that's the F8 or the Hornet Mark II. But the C1 Spirit, I, th I think a lot of people love that ship as well. I'm interested to know what your favorite ship is. Chuck it in the comments below. If you're trying Star Citizen for the first time, I I'd love to know about it as well. What's your experiences with Star Citizen at the moment? Have you been playing in 3.24? Obviously, it's broken at the moment. Did you play in that patch? Are you looking forward to it? Are you worried that everything's going to break like 3.18? Or are you more waiting for Alpha 4.0 later this year? Whatever your thoughts and questions, please chuck them in the comments below. You stand at the pearly gates. The winged being there weighs your sins against the weight of a feather. You are found wanting. Not a problem for NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer though. Just change your location. Boom! You're in! Bypass your sin. Get NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. Probably not a tagline that Nord wants bypass your sin, but that's what they're getting. Maybe they want one about its added security, privacy, or accessibility. Pah! Everyone knows that. You get that at touch of a button. Click these links below to get great deals on that VPN service. Every month we give away a ship, and this month of August is all about your favourite ships, because it's the ship showdown. My favourite ship is the Mercury Star Runner, and I don't want to give one of those away, but I will. It's a fantastic little multi-role, multi-crew ship. It's got a bit of cargo space, it's got room for a little vehicle, it's got a good amount of firepower, perfect little mission runner. In the future it's going to have data running, it's good for smuggling, it's got lots of secret little hidey holes. I absolutely love this ship. All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during August. Also, I would love to know what your favourite ship is. If you would like to further support the channel, consider just commenting or liking, subscribing, that all helps. But also there's the join button under my videos. That goes a huge way to allow us to make daily content on Star Citizen. There's also Patreon, sharing the videos, direct donations. There's links to all of that down below. Thank you so much for watching to the end. You take care and have a great day.